Good morning, everybody. We're back to Amud Yom Shir. We are here with Bov Metzia, Pei Aleph Amud Aleph, middle of the wide lines. I have a shalom people. Welcome all of you, everybody on our YouTube channel and in Torah anytime. This year's Lil Nishma Sobi Moiri Menachem and Akiva, Rus Bas Shalom Sobas Moishe. Good morning. And to the Refua of my aunt, Aviva Bas Dvora, and the Refua Bas Naama Bas Rochel Rama. The Mishnah spoke about a case in which, and we are learning, of course, about now the four Shomrim, people who accepted upon themselves to look after someone else's um, item. And one person said to the other, You look after my item, yeah? Okay, and then I'll be happy to look after your item. In other words, I'll do you a favor if you do me a favor. I look after your computer if you look after my cat. Okay, then Shomer Sachar, both sides are Shomer Sachar. Why? Because you're not really doing it for free. It's a barter deal. You're willing to look after his computer because he's going to look after your cat. But that's not called doing it for free. It's a condition. Therefore, it's Shomer Sachar. Frag Digmar Vamai. Why is the person actually? Yeah, have to pay like a Shomer Sochor. Shmira Bebailim he. Shmira Bebailim means as follows. Shmira Bebailim means that it says in the Torah, in the Olav Eina Imo Yishalem Yishalem. The Torah says regarding Shoel, but we also apply to other Shomrim, that if the owner of the item at the time of the Shmira, when the Shmira period, when the Shmira term started, the people actually was the people. The owner of the item did some job, did a work for who? For the borrower. Then the borrower doesn't have to pay for anything, Einstein and Gneva Vaveda, and possibly she uh, um, as well, maybe. Yeah, that's a very interesting Allah which we don't really understand, but that's what the Torah says. Pay Aleph from Aleph, middle of the wide lines, right? Yeah, the line starts with the word Zabna, we're at the end of the line already. Shmir Rebbeinu, which means why is when you and I both start together at 9 o'clock in the morning, yeah, it says 9 o'clock in the morning, I'm starting to look after your cat and you're looking after my computer, then really, while I'm looking after your stuff, you are doing some work for me. It doesn't make a difference what kind of work in your house, in my house, if the work is related to the Shmir or not. It could be that you lent me your, your drill, Erev Sukkot, and at the same time, you do some gardening work for me in a different place. doesn't make a difference. I, as a shomer, don't have to pay. And here it seems to be different, right? Here we're saying that while you do my stuff, you do work for me. What's work? To look after. Shmir is called work. Yeah, so why am I chayev if your computer broke? Yeah, you're looking at my, you're looking after my cat. Omar of Papa answers the Gemara. Of Papa says, the Omar lay. He told him, one Shomer told the other, Shmoli Hayoim Veshmol Cholemocho. Oh, it wasn't the same time. Timing is very important with this Baal of Imoy business. And therefore, if the person said Shmoli Hayom, we already decided Sunday, nine o'clock in the morning, that if you look after my computer today, I'm going to look after your cat tomorrow. Oh, and they made it a very clear dichotomy that the times are different. Then it's not called Baal of Imoy. Or the Rishonim say, Shulchanoruch says, I think, even uh, so in, in some a few places, so it, that if there are different times of day, it's the same thing. If I decide that till one o'clock I'm Shomer your thing, and from one o'clock you Shomer mine, then it's not called Baal of Imoy. Although the agreement was done right from the start, but we actually actualized the agreement only did clearly different times, that's not called Baal of Imoy, which is a Kiddush. We say, no, that's not Baal of Imoy. Baal of Imoy means when I practically look after your thing, or we'll see later if I'm about to look after your item, or do any job, any job. Yeah, If we decide that in my Shmira term, as a Shomer Choyin Chinam, Sochel, anything, if my term starts 9 o'clock, and at 9 o'clock you're on your way, you're already in the direction, in the mindset, in the process of doing some work for me, of washing my car, which may be two houses away, then I am potter for anything that happens to the item if you do work for me. But if it's clearly marked that the times are different, then no. Then it's not called Shmir Bebalov. Tono Abonon, on the same venue, a similar brisa, the gist brisa, gives us four different uh, variations on the theme, four different cases 
of mutual barter shmira. Let's go. That's the case we had. What does that mean? I'll do some work for you. I'm stressing work. In other words, I will look after your item, which Allah views as, as work, and you look after mine. Let's say it's the same day for now. Let's assume for now, same day, nine o'clock in the morning. You want me to look after your computer? Okay. Look after my cat. Good. Oh. Let's say case number two. You want me to, to you want to borrow uh, my drill? Okay. I will give you my drill. If you lend me your very nice, uh, interesting um, hammer, you have a special hammer. Give me your hammer to use, yeah, and you'll use my what, my um, whatever, my drill, vice versa, yeah. And each one, they both bartered the she'ela. Now that I'm already telling you now to avoid confusion. That's not the all of imoy. That's not the all of imoy. Why? The all of imoy is only when I do work for you. Nobody does work for anybody. They both exploit each other, right? I'm not doing anything for you. Yeah, means that I am enjoying your item and while you enjoy mine. We're swapping enjoyment or hano of the of the items. But that's not called the olivimoy. Now, shmorli the ishilcha. Third case is shmorli vashilcha, which means you want me to lend you my drill? Okay. I want you to also at the same time. Look after my item. You are both a sh another item. In other words, I'm looking for someone to look after my candlesticks. I'm going away to Chutzlaretz. Yeah, I don't like my candlesticks at home. Look after my fancy candlesticks, and in return, you know what I'll do to you? A shilcha. You can also take another item, my drill, and use the drill. So geographically speaking, both items are by the same person. Shmorli vashilcha. Look after my candlesticks. And then at the same time, you can use my drill, another item. So here again, there's no ball of imoy. It's one guy who does everything. It's a barter, but technically one guy is, he holds both items. And the fourth, the fourth uh, 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 combination is Ashileni Veshmolecho. Yeah, Shileni Veshmolecho, please can I use your drill? And you say, You want to use my drill? Okay, look after my candlesticks in return. Okay, so I am, I got both items to my house. One item is an item I'm looking after, and that's work. The other item I am borrowing from you for my benefit, and that could be the drill. In all four cases, Kulan, the common denominator is Nasu Shemir Sochra The yes, one common den denominator is nothing is for free. Either it's a combination of Sheila and Sheila, Sochra and Sheila, anything. If you know, if you followed all four cases, no such thing as free lunch, as they say in English. In other words, the she'ena was done for money, not money, cash, but for work. Either you show me it's for me, or we both show it from each other. But because there's a clear barter business over here, you'll do something for me, so I lend you my stuff. Therefore, the show so far. Because a shoyel who also is, is a shoyel for money, is a show so far. My question was, l'choyer should be a soichel. That's that I asked my Chavrusa, and I didn't see any in any of the Mephorshim. I asked, well, there is an opinion that says that the is a Shamar because really I'm not paying money. What right? I'm I'm using the item, like driving the car, like using a drill, and in return I'm paying. How am I paying? By looking after your thing or by letting you uh, borrow my thing. So I said, okay, maybe this Bryce of Paskins that a Soicher and renter is a Shamar Sochor. Frag the Gemara, the same question as before. Why is a Shamar Sochor? It's all very nice mathematically, but at the end of the day, the first case, Shmir Babaylami. Rashi stresses that the first case of the four, yeah, I'm doing work for you while well, you do work for me. I'm showing me your computer. I, that's work. That's work. And in return, you are showing me my cat. Now, this is mutual, but all of Imoy, because while you are a Shoimer, the owner of the item is doing work for you. Uh, glitch in the system, a bug in the system, because in that case, you don't have to pay. Amar of Papa, of Papa comes to the rescue with exactly the same answer as before. Of Papa will be mentioned a lot today. Daf Pe Aleph. Rav Papa, Daf Pe Aleph. Amar of Papa, the Amar Lei, Shmoli Hayam, Veshmol Lem Mocho. Very clear. Since there's clear, yeah, clear cut dichotomy between the times, the chronology is different. Today, Sunday, I'm looking after your computer, after your whatever item. In return, that tomorrow you look after my phone, okay? But it's clearly demarcated that the times don't overlap. That's not called Balavimoy. 
although the agreement was right from the start, is already mutual. But since you are only going to look after my stuff after I'm looking after yours, therefore it's not called Bolovimo. That's exactly the Kiddush of the Brysa. Bolovimo? Does he have to pay or not? If it's Bolovimo, he doesn't have to pay. It's a very strange halacha, which the Achronim really don't understand. Yeah, neither do I. And what? But Lamaisa, if you, if I borrowed your item, I borrowed your item or any other of the four variations, if I'm a Shoyal, Shemar Sochor, whatever it is, and at the time when I borrowed, yeah, when I started the agreement, you at the same time did work for me in my house, in your house, for money, not for money. We, we, by the way, this is discussed better in Daf, in the, in the, around Daf Tadi Given Tadidal with the Shomrim, but generally speaking, any kind of work you do for me, at the time of the she'ela, at the time of the borrowing, makes me potter, even if it breaks later. Oh, unsecure. Nine o'clock in the morning. Yeah, we have decided I am borrowing your drill, and at the same time, in your house, I don't know, three three streets away, I have a garden. You're gardening in my garden for free or for money. You're working for me. That means that if anything happens to the item, even three days later in my house, something happens to your drill. We'll see later. In most cases, I'm Potter. I'm exempt. Why is a good question? Yeah. Right, okay, let's continue. Then we'll we'll discover things as we go along. You want to say something? Right, let's continue. Okay, we said this before. Maybe we'll mention it later for our online uh, viewers. Now, let's continue with a very fascinating story, story time. Okay. There was a group of people, their profession was, I don't know if it's related, the profession was they were dealing, they were soichrim, they were merchants of ahalot. Ahalot means what? Not tents. Ahalot either means a detergent, as mentioned in Shabbos of Tzadi, or ahalot means uh, like in Shir Shir, ahalot vikinamayin, ahalot are perfume. They were perfume dealers, okay? A few men, a bunch of men working together. And they would be so they, they sold that that stuff. And then what was their agreement? The call Yoimo have afilechad minayu. That a rotation, that a roster. Every day somebody else would have to bake for the entire group. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Every day another group. Yeah, we are pay aleph from a few lines. Pay aleph from a few lines before the bottom of the page. Line starts with the word minayu. Pay aleph from Right? Is it true? Yeah, minayu. Every day, another member of the group would have to bake bread to the others. Very nice. Sunday, Moshi, Monday, Shloimi, Tuesday, uh, Rachamim. One day, they told one of the guys, oh, now let's assume that the one of the guys was supposed to do it. There are two versions to the story. Version number one, Rachamim, Tuesday, <clears throat> it's your baking day. Zil afilan, go bake us as you're supposed to, right? Okay. He's supposed to bake. He's supposed to go away from the group to the bakery, bake bread for everybody else. Omer Lu, but he told them before, not to legally moy. You know what? If you don't mind, guys, do me a favor. This is important. Be my shomer chinam and look after my glima, look after my coat. In other words, yeah, I'm going to bake. I can't bake with my kapite, with my frock on. You know, I'm taking off my frock, taking off my whatever. Yeah, you look after my outer garment while I bake something for you. Be, do a favor. Shemer does a favor. It's called what in the four rungs letter? Shemer, chinam, very very good. Shemer chinam, gratis. Ade also, and as he came, pashu ba ve'ignuv. Unfortunately, they were all pashia. In other words, they were all looking very intently in the Gemara. Hopefully, not the smartphone, but they were really not paying attention. And somebody stole it as a result of pshia. And we all know that a shemer chinam is chayv and pshia. It's actually the only thing is chayv. A shemer chinam. You went, you're not chayv much, you were that bad, you're so negligent, you're chayv. Also, the commander of Papa, they went in front of Rav Papa in order to see who, what, where, who owes who money. Chayvinu, he told them, you guys are shomer chinam, and as such, you have to pay for pshia. Omel Rabbon Rav Papa, Rabbon and Esra Papa, <clears throat> excuse me, am I? Falvos, why? Pshia bebailimi. It's pshia bebailim. Why? He's doing work for them. Even if he's on his way to the baker, that's something that is shown him stress. Either he started baking or is going to bake. So while they started the operation, while they started the term, the Shmira term, he at the same time is starting his baking term. That's classical, classical, classical Balavimoy. 
the old Vimer applies not only to Shoyal, even though it's mentioned in Shoyal, mentioned in the term Shoyal, it applies also to the Vov, the, which means also Shemer Sochor and Shemer Chinam. And if, if as such, how can an Amoyer not know a, a thing from the Torah? Ich sif, ich sif. He was ashamed. He was embarrassed. Rav Papa, the Elgi Amoyer, the beloved Rav Papa, was ashamed for Kilo not knowing the Alocha. Alocha Pshuta. How is he Mechayev a Shemer Chinam while the Shemer Chinam as the status of Baalavimoy, because the owner of the item that you're looking after at the very, very same moment is baking beautiful bread for you. Can't you smell? Yeah, so Ixif, the Rav Papa is in the Shtoch. Le Soif, at the end, Hashem looks after Rav Papa. Le Soif, at the end, Igloi Milsa, at the end it came out, it was discovered, yeah, it was discovered when they, you know, they did the detective work in Beisdin, the Ahu Shaita Shichra Havikashosi, at the time when the item was stolen, or even at the beginning of the term of their shmira, that's more important, he was drinking beer. He was drinking beer. In other words, that Shoimer, he wasn't a bad guy. Not Shoimer, excuse me. The baker said, oh, listen, I have the entire day. Ever been to an Israeli government office? Yeah, they take a break before they even start working. Yeah, you take a break before you start your work, you know? So he said, I'm going to bake. I'm not uh, dishonest. I'm going to have a break before work, a nice 20 minutes, you know, nice time with my cerveza, right, with a beer, and uh, and then I'll start working. Came out that what? Now, it doesn't make a difference when it was stolen. Even if afterwards, when he started baking, that's very, very important to know. Let's say he had his nice break before work beer time between 9 and 9.30. Between uh, That's a long time, yeah? Now 9.20. And at that moment, they said to each other, that's when the Shmir kicks in. Then their potter, even if he started baking 9.20 and the theft took place 9.30, still potter. They are still potter. Why? Yeah. Why is that? Very good. Did you? Because their Shmir period started... Well, he did not do work for them. He didn't even intend to yet do work for them. He says, I'm, I'm going to start it later. I'm not on my way to bake. I'm not starting anything with the wood or the oven. It says, Which means, if we started together, if we started one, two, three, nine o'clock, boom, race. He starts baking, getting ready for baking, as Rosh Hashanah say. They start the Shmira at the same time. Then we say, even though he stopped baking 9.20, the other way, he baked from 9 to 9.20, yeah, at the beginning, and the theft was 9.30, then they're going to be chayim. Then, 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 excuse me, then, then they'll be potter. Then they'll be potter. The beginning is what makes a difference, yeah? Even though the time of the theft, he didn't do work anymore, it does make a difference. The Mai said, the time of the beginning, both actions were together, that's what potters them. Here, he was delayed. He started doing for them after, like you said, right, he started working for them 9.20, they started Shmir at 9, therefore here they are Chayev, it's not Baal of Imoy, because they didn't start together, so they are yes Chayev, it's not Baal of Imoy, right, and therefore Rav Papa at the end of the day was right, Rav Papa, so to speak, luckily enough, was right, that here particularly there was no Baal of Imoy, because at the time of the Shmir started, he was not Bechlal in the story, he knew, that's more like, excuse me, Shmur Le'Yom, Shmur Le'Lamochor, we said before, if I know you start my Shmira 9 and I'll start my work for you to garden or to bake for you or to do your, your beard, whatever that is, later, then 20, half a minute, a half an hour later or five minutes later, whatever, that's not called Bolavim. And that's the story over here. Therefore, the Maestro Papa was right that they do have to pay because it's not Bolavim. So they do have to pay as Pusha. But Papa came out, but the skin of his teeth came out right. Okay, yeah. Before we continue, and before I listen to your question, Yaakov, before we continue, no, no, let, let me have this straight. Baal of Imai can very easily happen, yes, which means it's not both have to start the same work, punct 900. No, if we have an operate, which means we have an agreement, yeah, you're going to use my drill, okay, nine o'clock in the morning. And nine o'clock in the morning, I'm beginning to get into the mood of having to do something for you. As long as I don't drink beer and I dafka postponed it, beer or coffee or whatever, yeah, as long as generally speaking, I'm on my way, I'm in the mindset, I'm willing to do the work for you, I'm supposed to be doing the, the work for you, I'm in the wavelength of doing work for you, then already it's called Bolo Vimoy, and that can happen very commonly.
okay? This guy, Dafka said, I'm not doing anything. I'm taking my break before I even start. I will clearly only begin clearly, clearly after they start the Shmir. Otherwise, it is Bolovima. So therefore, Bolovima is definitely a very common thing. Question another, and then we continue. So now, Frek the Gemara. Now we'll see there's a question regarding Shomachinam with Bolovima. Three lines from the bottom of the page. Which means, those guys were poshe. They were negligent. They're not even trying to look after it. Mamish Shakua immersed in the phone. And therefore, there is an opinion that says that Pshia Bebalim is also potter, which means the, 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 that very interesting idea of Be'ol of Imoi applies to even Shemachina, which is Poshia. Some people say no, some people say yes. If you say that Be'ol of Imoi applies to Shoyel, Shemachor, Soicher, and Shemachina, then the story makes sense. And that's why Rav Papa looks as if Rav Papa didn't know Khalila Cheder stuff. There is an opinion that says that I'm not giving you a svara, which I don't think the Gemara says later on. Shia, you're chayev even with Baal of Imai. Oh, in other words, when the person was mamish negligent, he crossed the red line. Yes, yeah, Amr Shalim says mamish mazik. Yeah, he was poshe. I was so negligent. Then we say that you are not. There is no ptur. There's no exemption of Baal of Imai, and he still has to pay. I borrowed your drill. Yeah. At the same time, you look after my garden, okay? And the drill, I was so bad with the drill. I was so poshe with the drill. Poshe is negligent and criminal. Yeah, then I'm chayv. There is such a man, Omar. Yeah? If so, am I ichzif? Why was he ashamed? He was right. <laughs> was Rav Popper embarrassed and ashamed? Oh, I don't know. What do you mean? You're right. Rav Popper holds of a shita. Yeah, it's, a, it's actually a question within my room, as far as I remember. Am I ichzif? Yeah, why are you ashamed? You're right. Yishayim Rechinam doesn't have that special dispensation. Ela. So let's rewrite the story. Ahu Yoima, now you'll understand what's stressed before. Ahu Yoima loved it, they have. Tuesday wasn't Moshe's turn to bake the bread. Yeah, <clears throat> let's say yesterday, our guy, our beer lover, he already baked yesterday his, his roster time. His, his turn was yesterday. Today, they asked him today to do a special favor, special extra time he's not supposed to. The Omru lay, they told him, like day, they told him, Zil Afilan, at, you go bake. Yeah, although you baked yesterday, you bake again. What would a uh, good guy say? I am. Wow, well, I did yesterday. I did my turn already. The Omru, lo, I wanted to do something for you. In the schar of me baking your bread extra, which I'm not supposed to, you look after my glima, look after my coat in return for that. I call that in English, Shoimer Sachor. Classical barter Shomer Sochor. Ah, so there's Shomer Sochor. At the Osto, until it came Igniv, it was stolen, not Bepshia. It was stolen in the middle level, the middle level of Shomer Sochor, Gneva Vaveda. They were looking after it pretty well. Yeah, they were not Poshia. They were, yes, no, they were on the smartphone every, I don't know, 20 minutes, not every second. Yeah, and what? And then it was stolen in between. That's Gneva. Oh, and Gneva. Everyone agrees that Gneva Vaveda Bashamar Sachor, there is the exemption of what? Of Baal of Imoy. Also, Commander of Popa, the Gentor of Popa, Chayvinu. Rav Popa told the Shamir, you have to pay. Your Shamir Sachor, Gneva Vaveda, pay up. But still, Omer Larabonon, Rav Popa, Narabonon approached Rav Popa. Hashmir Bebailimi. Excuse me, Rav Popa. Hashmir Bebailim. Why? Because he started baking for them or was on the mindset he was already going to bake for them. Well, they were starting to look after his item. That's Baal of Ima. What do they have to pay? Ichsif. Rav Papa was ashamed for, you know, getting it wrong. At the end, it was discovered. They shaita shichrahavi. Very good, shati. At the end of the day, as the story goes, Rav Papa happened to be right because there were, technically speaking, there was no Baal of Ima. Why? Because it was clear derogation in his mind. He says, I'm not baking for these guys. I'm not even going towards it. He went to the bar <laughs> instead of the bakery. I'm clearly not doing the job for them now. They started to already be shoimer. He did not start baking or anything close to baking. He was having beer with a friend, nothing. And then he'll start. The mail, it's not Baal of Imoy, because the times of the beginning of the Shmira and the beginning of the work are not overlapping. Ad Khan the story. Another story, and I would like you to ask now less questions. We basically started two days onward. Hanu Beitrei. Yeah, you can ask the important things. Very interesting story. 
two people were walking, yeah, on their way. They were walking, Baurcha, they're walking together somewhere. They're walking together. Baurcha, in the Orch, in the Derech, they were walking in a path in a way. Chad Arich the Chad Gutsa. One was tall, the other one was short. Yeah, imagination starts here. Yeah. Chad Arich was the tall guy and the short guy. Aricha Rachiv Chamra, the tall guy was was uh, riding a donkey. The Havile Sadina. And he also had, he wasn't wearing it, by the way, but he had like an extra garment which was made out of linen. And linen is very good with water. Linen is lighter. He had this like light outer jacket, outer garment like the Arabs were, like a jilaba, something made out of linen. And he had it stored on the back of the donkey. That's what we have to say for later. Hutza, the shorter guy who was walking instead of being on the donkey, the short guy, Michsi Sarbala. He was wearing a heavy woolen coat. He had like a woolen sweater. We all know wool naturally is more dense and heavy and weighs more. The Kamaz Gibekari, he was walking on his feet. He didn't have the donkey. So you have the tall guy. Now, I'm not sure it says tall and short. There's a question here. I didn't get a very good shot in that. Why well, it's relevant. But Lamai said one guy is on the donkey and he has potentially stores there. The, he has with him the light kind of garment. The short guy is walking along with him on the floor, walking on the ground. Without uh, He doesn't have his uh, Chevrolet. And what does he have? He's wearing a heavy woolen thing, a garment. Kimato Lenahara. They came to a river. Oh, Coming to a river makes a huge difference whether you're wearing wool or you wear linen. Why? Wool is much heavier with the water. The water really, you know, heavies, you know, weighs down. The, the item, if it's, you know, woolen sweater, is not gishmak when you're in the river. But Schenken, the lighter garment, is nicer. So now, what did he do with the short guy? Shakli le sarbele. He took off his outer garment, the heavy, you know, woolen thing. The oisve iloi chamwa. And he put it on the donkey. Basically, he's using his friend as a shoimer, possibly shoimer chinam. Yeah? The shakle le sdine, right? And now he's taking his sodin dahu. He's taking the lighter garment of the tall guy on the donkey, and he's wearing it. He's basically changing clothes. He's changing from the heavy item that he is the owner of. He doesn't go into the water with a heavy woolen thing, right? And therefore, what does he do? Takes off, puts it in a donkey, and then he takes the other guy's item, the linen, light one, the lightweight linen, from the donkey and puts it on himself to cross the river. Now he can cross the river like an Olympic swimmer. Yeah, with the lighter thing on. Okay. Shatua Mailis Dine. Uh-oh. Now the water washed away the sudden. Yeah, Shatwilis Dine. Now I would say, you know, that's even Oinus. He's a shoyel. He borrowed, right? Yeah. And what? And it wasn't Beschar, by the way. He borrowed. Yeah, he borrowed it. And now, even if you see it as a Shomer Socher, that's going to make a difference. Because both a shoyel or a Shomer Socher, which way, whichever way you view him, Lamaisa, the ball of Imoy applies. Now the water washed it away, the oinus. Ah, all of a sudden the thing is out of control. There's a short guy, there's a little guy. One of them, before Shim said, that's what say short and long because it was oversized. It happened because, you know, it, it was too heavy for him. He wasn't his size, so that's what was washed away. He got all mixed up there. I guess he wasn't an Olympic swimmer. Also, came to Rove. Now they came to Rove. And of course, what the guy wants, the owner of the nice lighter garment that was washed away, is very angry. He wants to be paid. Whether you're a shoyel, yeah, a shoyel's chai boinsin, right? So if it's oinus, it's only shoyel. Shomer Socher is not chai boinsin. So I guess we view him as a shoyel. And you say, if that was oinus, even if it was oinus, yeah, a shoyel has to pay for that. Hey, chai ve. And Rava says, yeah, he has to pay. If it's a shoyel, he has to pay. Maybe it was going to be a day that the Shomer Socher, whatever the story was, got to pay. Amr le Rabban and Rav again. Aham, aham, am I? Why? Why does he have to pay Shelo bebaylimi? At the time when the item was borrowed, right? At the very same time, the tall guy on the donkey, high and dry. What does he do? He is looking after his garment. No. So while he is swimming away with the garment of Mister Donkey Guy, Mister Donkey Rider, at the same time is looking after his item, after the after his garment, after the woolen garment, right? It's stored by him. So it's Baal of Imo. Baal of Imo, he doesn't have to pay. Whether so, he's not a Shem, yeah, whatever, he's not a Shem Rechinam. He's a Shem Rechinam or a Shoyal. So what is, what, yeah, what's the story? Ichsif, again, Rova was ashamed. At the end, it came out something different. He did it without the knowledge of the donkey guy. Hmm. 
Mr. Short guy was not exactly, as we say in Hebrew, excuse the pun, the talis shakul of chelis. He wasn't a tzaddik. In other words, he wasn't agreed upon at all. He did it without the knowledge of the guy. Meaning, the sanding was stored, I guess, behind the back of Mr. Donkey Rider, the lighter garment. He took off his, what? His woolen garment, put it behind the guy, and switched without him knowing. He put his heavy item on the donkey, took the donkey without the person knowing that. Oh, and therefore what? First of all, the all of Imoy is only when the bandim is aware he's doing a job for you. If you force him without him, his knowledge that he's a shamer, yeah, he's not really a shamer. He's not doing anything for you because it's not knowingly so. He's not aware of what's going on. The person is not aware. It's not called Baal of Imoy, right? Clearly so. Yeah, I want to be a big Chochom. I want to create a Baal of Imoy situation. I'm a very big, you know, slight Talmud Chochom kind of guy. And these people exist, yeah? So it says, can I borrow your drill? Yeah, I borrow my drill. At the same time, I stoop something without your knowledge to your house. And so, oh, now you're my Shomer. No, you didn't accept Shmira. Shmira has to be by clear acceptance that the Shomer accepts, I am a Shomer, which will be the next sugya. There was no Kabbalah Shmira here, right? And finished. Therefore, another idea that I have, if you notice, both, both sides are mentioned here. He took it without permission, and he put his item without permission. When he took the, the garment, the light garment, without permission, then what? Again, he's a, possibly a Gazlan. Shal Shlomi Das, some say he's a Gazlan. A gazlan doesn't have all of you, my. <laughs> if I, there's a gvul, there's a limit. If I stole something from you, and at the same time you do work for me, I'm a real, you know, I, I'm a real uh, piece of work. Then we don't say all of you, my. So from both sides here, there's no reason to have all of you, my. So Rava was right at the end of the day. Hashem looks after the Amiroim, and even if he looks, that's Rava in this case. Rav Popa was before, now it's Rava, although it's the same ichsi, the same word of Busha. Look, look inside, look inside, you'll see. That's a father, that's all of it. Yeah, quick one. Very quick one. There's the Gemara. How Gavra. Story time. How Gavra, the Oigar le Chamra le Chavre. A person, now Chamra here is a donkey, not wine. A person rented a donkey, rentadonkey.com. Ah, welcome to rentadonkey.com. You can rent, uh, you can yeah, hire my donkey for the day. There is conditions, terms and conditions. Omerle, you should know, you told him. The donkey owner, the rented donkey told the client, Chazi, look, don't go through the river of Pekoid. There's water. My donkey doesn't know how to swim. It's not a duck. It's a donkey. And therefore what? Yeah, it doesn't know how to swim. There's water. Don't go to Nahar Pekoid. And tell you clearly, nothing against Nahar Pekoid. I'm not against Nahar Pekoid, you know, color of skin. But Lamaisk, that's a place where there's water, and it's dangerous for the donkey. Zil Baruch Alternatively, you know, like the GPS, the Waze gives you alternative routes. The real route or route is Narish. Go through the the road of Narish. There's a city called Narish. And there you should go. The Lake Amaya. There it's not wet. It's a wadi. It doesn't have any water. It's just, you know, a dry place. Go there. Very nice. So what did the rented donkey do? I guess it was a teenager. Of course, he went against what the people told him. He went against the rules of the rented donkey place, and he did go to an arpegod. And surprise, Umis Hamra and the donkey died. Why did he die? Well, water. The water washed. Uh, he drowned. Yeah, in the water. Very nice. Very chokham person. Now ki also. Then he came, and he now has to face the fact, and we see a dead donkey. The donkey didn't completely disappear. The donkey is dead. Yeah, we don't know why it died. Well, we know. That the donkey died because he drowned in the in the water, and maybe then that what in the water, yeah. And then he took the body, whatever. But Lamaisa, he told him a different story. Omar says the donkey driver, the irresponsible client, in yes, I admit, I went through the harpikoid, and it was really wrong of me. I'm so sorry, really, I'm wrong. But there was no water there. Today, the harpikot was dry. There was no water there. Yeah, the face you're making is what everyone else in the room had. The face like, what? Well, Lamaisa says, yes, trust me. Lamaisa, you didn't tell me. Now, that we have to stress. You didn't tell me, don't go to an harpikot. You said, don't go to an harpikot because it's because there's water. There's a stream there. Today, there was no stream. It was dry. And therefore, I didn't really disobey you, which means I wasn't Pasha. So it's Ines. You know, the donkey died. No water. Heart attack in the middle of the day. We went through dry land of Narpikod. Boom, Malachamovas came and took away dear donkey. I'm so sad. 
Yeah, Lamaisi wasn't connected Bukhlan. It's not even close to Pshia Vesafi Bainis. It's not Pshia because it was dry. I saw it was dry. Omer Lei Rova. So now Rova says, you know, we should believe him. Why? We have a thing called Amigo. Mali le Shaker. Amigo. Yeah, we all know about that. Mali le Shaker, which means, yeah, he, if he wanted to lie, he could have said a better lie. He boy, if, if he wanted Omer Lei, he could have told us, Anabe Orchadin Arash Azli. We don't know. There were no cameras that watched him where he walked, right? He could have said, I am now, I did walk in Orcha Denarish. If he wanted, he could have lied very well and say, I walked the right way, the proper way. Yeah, no cameras, no uh, radars. Yeah, I was walking in the right way of Narish where it's dry and nice and you recommended me to go there. Got a heart attack. Now I'm I'm being honest with you. I'm telling you the truth, the word that I went through Pekoid and it was in a way a naughty boy going in Pekoid. However, Pekoid was really dry. So believe me, Pekoid is dry because it could have lied better. And believe me, it was a heart attack, nothing to do with water. That's the, def- the, the, the line of defense. And that is some kind of idea of Migo. Believe me that what I'm saying is right. Because had I lied, I could have lied much, much better. Nobody knows what I did. There are no Adim. There are no Adim against me, or so we think. Yeah? Pekoid, I could have said, I went to Narish. Narish Kite. I went to Narish. Everything was good as my, as I obeyed everything. And good, if he's saying the truth, don't punish him for that. Omer Laba, I'm not going to all the lomdas of me, now. There's a lot of lomdas here, but that's a general idea. Omer Laba, Abai is saying to Robert, uh oh, Mali le Shakir bim Gomedim Lomrinan, famous, 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 famous line. Mali le Shakir bim Gomedim Lomrinan, which means, Migo, as I said many, many times, every um, tool, every Weapon, you have been based in all kinds of weapons, verbal weapons you can use in based in to prove your point. Migo, Shtar, Edim, Chazoko, Roiv, just an array of five right away. Now, each one is stronger than the other. Lahavdil, like in a cards game, yeah, the ace is more than the king, right? Yeah, Lahavdil, same thing over here. Mali Lashakir is a very good time, it's strong, but it's weaker than Edim. Here comes about the big Kiddush that are him. In other words, if I had two witnesses that he was walking where? In Nahar, Pekoid, then he can't tell a story. I could have told you that what? That, uh, no, no, there are Edim. There are two people, two from Jews, men to tell that one. Here there are no Edim. He didn't send any spies that ran to Hamor. However, there's a concept called Anan Sahadi. Anan Sahadi means we, let me ask you a question to explain what Anan Sahadi is. Did you ever see two from men, Yerushalayim, they don't gamble, they don't do a virus, the real kosher Adim, and they went to outer space and they told you that their earth, uh, that the shape of the earth is roundish? No, so maybe the earth is not round because I didn't have two Adim. Let's be real, real halachic square heads and say, I don't know if the world is, is round. It's all these pictures of the Gaim. I didn't see a uh, two Gdol uh, Ador telling me, Adus Be'inehem Ro. Come on, don't be uh, foolish. In other words, Anan Saadi means we witness without having witnesses. Some ideas, some axioms, some dogmas, some ideas are so clear to us. In other words, we know that this is reality, and it's as good as two Adim testifying in Beisdin. Since we know that Nahar Pekoid, and by the way, I didn't stress it, up until now we thought it's just a Chazoka. We assume Nahar Pekoid always runs. He's always, there's always a stream. Says by no, we know it's always, yeah. You think the river Thames, yeah, in England, is the water there now? How do you know? Uh, you have to edit from Golders Green and San Francisco. You know, how do you know? How do you, you know, you know, the Thames is always there. There's always water. It's not a dry river in the, in the, in the Negev. And therefore, it's a known fact. A known fact is like to aid him. Oh, to aid him in the hierarchy, in the card game, to aid him are stronger than me go. That's Aloha. To Adim, Shal Tishnaim Adim Yokum Dov, or Zexel Sakosu. To Adim, once we trust them, once we drill them and we test them, we know the two Adim are right. Therefore, having a very clear geographical fact that the river flows is like two Adim. So, therefore, he couldn't, therefore, what? He could have told us Narish, but he's what I call the forefront. Every Migo has two Tainas, the fore and the back, the front and the back. Your front Taina, the Taina you are saying now, the what? I went in the Harpe Code, right? And the Harpe Code was dry. That's what you're saying is a fact? You could have said Narish would be nice. But Lamaisa, 
Yeah, the fact you're saying now, nah, the code was dry, is against reality. The reality is like two Adim, Anan Saadi. We are witnesses without having witnesses. Our witness, our testimony, our witnessing, so to speak, the Arpikot is always wet and always stream, always, always flowing, is stronger than your Migo. And therefore, uh, your Taina is already out, is already trumped by the Adim. And what are the Adim? Reality is the Adim. Viter, 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 Viter. Questions can be reserved for 10. 26. Now we're discussing the next part of the Mishnah. Shmor li v'amaloi hanach lefona yishomer chinam. What does that mean? The Mishnah said, if a person told his friend, Shmor let's say the person is, we're going to see later, either in his house or even in the street. And I tell you, I'm running now to shear. Oh, all of a sudden I have something to look after, my phone. Can you look after my phone, please? Shmor li, Shmor li. And what did you say? Your response was, Hanach lefonai, uh, put it in front of me. You didn't say, I accept Shmira. You says, put the phone in front of me right here, in front of my eyes. We interpret it to Shomer Chinam, which means the Chiddush is not that it's not a Shomer Sochor. Of course, it's not a Shomer Sochor. No money was mentioned, right? No work, no money, no barter. The Chiddush is that even though he didn't say the words, I will be Shomer Chinam, but if the fact they say, put it here, close to me, close to my eyes, within my Dalad Amos, that shows that I'm accepting Shmir Hashem Rechina. Omar Ravuna. Now comes Ravuna, the statement that at the end of the day will be contradictory. Omar Lehanech Lefonecho. Let's say the response of the potential Shemer was, ah, you want me to look after your phone? Put it in front of you. Uh-huh. Meaning, what does that mean? Ain't a loy Shem Rechina v'loy Shem Which means, if I answer you quite cynically, sarcastically, ah, look, yeah, put it in front of you, that means to say, I'm not accepting Shmira. You can put it here next to me as long as you are in charge. It should be close to you. I'm not accepting Shmira. So if, again, so if I say put it in front of me, we interpret it as yes, I accept Shmira, I will look after it. If I say put it in front of you, it means I don't accept, and you guard it, I'm not accepting any responsibility. Iboilu, obviously, what's the obvious question now? Hanach stomo. My. Let's just say, put it here. He didn't say put it in front of me or put it in front of you. He just said, place it, put it. Up. Without me or you, what would be the halacha in that case? Toshma, let's try and figure out from what the Mishnah said and what Ravuna said. Shmorli, what did the Mishnah say? If the person, Shmorli, please look after it. The response was, put it in front of me. Then it is the Shamar Chinam. Only if you clearly said, yes, put it here, right in the airport. You got to go to the toilet, right? You're in the lounge, not the fancy lounge, right? And you don't feel like going to the toilet with three heavy suitcases, right? So what do you do? Yes, the guy next to you who lock, looks nice and trustworthy, please look after the suitcases. Let's continue the story, right? Good. Happens to you? Maybe not. To me, it happens. On the So if the guy in the airport says, yes, Put the suitcases next to my, you know, seat here. Then it's Shomer Chinam. Hastoma. If he says, put, place it. Okay, place. Put. Hastoma. Without, you know, mentioning the location. Veloy Klum. Hastoma Veloy Klum. Mashmam Nara Shomer, right? Only if he said, yeah, put it here. Next to my, you know, the metal, you know, benches of the airport. Yeah, yeah, put it here in my, in my, on my bench. Means I'm a Shomer. So Stam put it. Anywhere nearby, he's not a shomer. And Rabbi says the Gemara, I can read the other way around. Midoma Rav Huna. If you read Rav Huna's words, you'd come to an opposite conclusion. What did Rav Huna say? Just the opposite. If I go to toilet and the guy says, "You want me to look after it? Huh? Put it next to you." Meaning I'm not shomer. Mashma hastoma shomer chinam avi. Mashma that if I put it in no man's land, somewhere in the middle, then what is a shomer chinam? So there's a steer between the Mishnah and Rav Huna. Very, very interesting, funny kind of Gemara, because really, usually Gemara should have attacked Rav Huna from the Mishnah. Here we say Rav Huna the Amoira, and the Mishnah are looked at as one text, as one idea, and there's a steer of the Yukim. It falls between the cracks, right? On one end, we know the what, that if I say put it next to me, is a Shmira. Much more anything less than that is not. Rav Huna is just the other way around. If he says, put it next to you, you want it, you show me it. Much more anything in the middle will be my Shmira. From this Mishnah with Ravuna's Pshat, you can't figure out your question, the answer. 
you can't figure out to figure out an answer from that. We had that is not a good source to answer the question. The Mishnah plus Ravuna is still remains unclear about what happens in a in a parav kind of case where I didn't say put it in front of me in my bench or I didn't say it on the other end, put it on your bench. What would be in such a case is still a question. Yeah, we can't figure it out from the Mishnah and Ravuna. I think that this question of a parav kind of response. You didn't say put in front of me. You just said place it, put it nearby, but not in front of me. Mamish is a machlokis tanoim, and we're going back to Bavakama around the um, I think. In hichnis belshus balchotzer chayim. What's the story? Let's say the person is not in the airport. I gave an example of an airport, not stam, because I'm trying to make it interesting. The Gemara will clearly say we're talking here about belshus arabim. Now the Gemara wants to bring a case from Bavakama. Where the uh, the story is Roshus Hayochid. Let's say a person is in his courtyard, in his chotzer, which is nice and protected area. Knock on the door. A guy comes popping in his head, bobbing in, and says, "Yeah, excuse me. Can you please look after my cow, my peros, my fruit, my stuff?" And the Baal chotzer says, "Yes. Put it here, not in front of me. I'm. Let's say you can put it in my salon, put it in my living room." I have, you know, an open, an open plan kitchen. I'm cooking supper for my kids. I'm not saying put it in the kitchen right in front of my eyes. Yeah, put it somewhere in the chotzer. Says Tanakama, Chayev. Anything that would happen to that item automatically, even though he didn't say place in front of me, he said put it somewhere nearby. He's already called a shaymer. It's going to be Chayev. Wow. That's what Tanakama says. That answers our question. And yet Rebbe Oimer, Rebbe says no. The kulam, enuchayev, in all three cases mentioned there, there's a cow, there's a thing. In all items that are mentioned, you're not chayev as a shomer, achikabel olo balabais lishmor. No. If balabais just said, yes, you can place it in my house, you know what he means? You can place it in my house. I'm not going to call the police to take it out. <laughs> you're allowed to have it in my house. Yeah? But it does mean I'm a shomer. Unless he accepted and said, I am a shomer. Or at least you should say, yeah, yeah, put it right in front of me in the kitchen counter. If he just says, yeah, place it in the chotzer, there is not a shoimer. That's Machlakas Tanakama and Rebbe. When I was part of I said, you know, you can put it in my house. Okay. And I say I'm a shoimer. Tanakama interprets it right away as shmirah, even though it's very parav. And Rebbe says, no, it's a very parav lashon. It's not a shmirah. Says the Gemara, Mimai, how do you know? Oh, it's time. Basically, the Gemara wants to prove now, the Gemara is going to break very easily the Tushta. The comparison will be, yeah, it will be shattered and broken. It's not the same story. But right now, the Gemara wants to say, and I'll leave you with that all the way till Sunday. Wow. Ooh, we're staying in suspense here, yeah? Basically, what's the question? A person says, a person was told, can you look after my thing? He didn't say yes. He didn't say no. He didn't even say put it next to me. He says, put it around me, near me, not very near me, in front of my eyes. He said, put it in the salon. Yeah, that's a question. Is it called already a shamer or not? Before we finish, I'm going to use the time now. The Nimuk Yosef asks the question, by verbally saying, I'm a shamer, or just saying, yes, okay, for sure not a shamer. In order to be a shamer, chinam, or soch, or shol, anything, which is a very obligating thing, you have to do an action. The Gemara says, just like in order to own, or in order to be called a thief, to be chayev, you have to do mashicha. You have to do pulling, a Kenyan mashicha. Here, the shamer didn't do any mashicha. He didn't do anything physical, just verbal. By words only, he can't be chayev. And the answer of the Meruka Yosef is, male if it's in someone's house, it's a Kenyan chotzer. It's in your chotzer, it's like a Kenyan for shmira. Again, Kenyanim is not only to own something. Kenyanim also means to be obligated. You become obligated, but if it's in the airport, the airport is not yours. JFK and Atvag are not yours, as far as I know. They belong to rich people. I don't know. Yeah. So why do you say that just placing it here makes you chayim? Says the Nimukha Yosef, if it's a sesimta, if it's a quiet place or a quiet corner in the airport where people are supposed to be sitting or quiet street, every person, if you remember, has his Dalit Amos. I have my Dalit Amos. The four Amos near me can be mine temporarily to be coined. Same thing over here. If it says, put it in my Dalit Amos, that's called like my Chotzel. That's a Kenyan for Shmira. That's one answer. He has other answers. Shkoich. Questions are very welcome now. Thank you. Thank you very much for everybody here. YouTube and, of course, there any time. And everybody here are welcome to ask the questions and comments. Thank you.